Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Deaf Woke. My name is Antoine. Last name is Hunter, also known as Purple Fire Crow. I'm really excited for tonight. Today we have, well, today is March 18th, 2021. And on this day, I am so grateful that we're able to come together to lift each other up, to be a part of this community, to get to be around each other. This year has not been easy, am I right? But we've gotten through it. We've made it happen. We haven't given up. We just have continued to just keep breathing. And no matter the craziness that's happened, how busy we are, just taking a moment and just take a breath. Inhale and exhale. Do that again with me. Just inhale and exhale. That's so important that we just take a moment to breathe. We have an amazing guest here with us today. Before we start, let me introduce our amazing interpreters. Hello, hello, interpreters. Where are you? Show your faces. We have Jay and Kaylee. Thank you both for your services and for being here tonight. Really, they're great people. All right, so just a brief introduction of who we are. Today we have a special guest, brief introduction on who he is. We have CJ Jones, a writer, a musician, a motivational speaker. He's been involved in the hearing world, in the deaf world, and he's trying to merge those two together. He's done comedy, inspirational. He's been on TV in blockbuster films, stand-up comedy, many accolades for 40 years. And he does not slow down. No, no, no. Keeps going, keeps going. What an inspiration to us all. So empowering. So he, CJ is such uh, such a cool guy. He was in a movie back in 2017. He played the character of Joseph in Baby Driver. And that was directed by Edgar Wright back in 2017. CJ's role was the first Black deaf actor to be a part of an international blockbuster film. So that was so exciting to watch. You can also see him in many different feature films and TV shows. He's on different TV shows. CJ, you are an inspiration to us all. He has his own story to tell of how he began his own studio how he's been involved in so many different projects. He's been in Frasier, he's been in so many different shows. So let's hear from CJ himself. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs of all types of people, Humans of all, CJ Jones, come on in. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you so much uh, for having me on your platform. 
Oh, of course, we're blessed to have you here. How have you been doing? Man, it would take me all day to tell you what's been going on with me recently. But, you know, I, I can try to give you as much food as much as I can. Um, and so I can try to give you an in window into my in my life. <laughs> Many people know you as an actor and a performer. But they don't know your story of where you grew up, where you were born. Tell us about your your life. I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, my parents are deaf. I was one of seven kids. I was born hearing um, and about age seven, I uh, became deaf. Oh, so you were signing from an early age. Yep, all my brothers and sisters sign. Yeah, my first language is sign language. I grew up signing, and I just uh, there's no really no explanation. I just became deaf, um, so I kind of uh, maneuvered between both English and sign language. Oh, uh, actually, I had spin uh, spinal spinal gyrus, spinal gyrus, and that's how um, I lost my hearing. That's amazing. So you've been a part of the deaf world you know what it's like to be a part of of both worlds you know i just grew up you know my mom was signing uh you know signing was always i was always exposed to signing um and uh it, it didn't matter if my if my siblings were talking uh, at the dinner table it was required that we'd all sign so becoming deaf, I was already accustomed to sign language. So becoming deaf, I didn't feel as if I lost something. It was just kind of a natural progression. Wow. Did you feel like your family was accepted in that town in St. Louis? Um, all of you being deaf, did you feel like you were accepted or more of an outcast? No, what I remember is segregation. So the Missouri School for the Deaf uh, had already implemented uh, segregation. I mean, maybe 1975? No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Right, 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 right. 65. So it's 65. Uh, so my parents had a strong belief in uh, mainstreaming. I didn't want to uh, really have that segregation. Uh, my parents love, uh, didn't care what color skin you were. Uh, parents taught love. And so we yeah, had black, white, uh, didn't matter in the kitchen. You know, we, I grew up used to being um, kind of have it, that, that full gross exposure to all cultures. Um, so my parents didn't want to keep kind of the, the idea of separation. I see. So the dinner table, I mean, you had all different kinds of foods from all the cultures. I mean, soul food. What else? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of family chats. Your family, they seem very well educated, very involved in, are they involved in the arts world or not really? It's a good question. My father and my mother, they grew up. They didn't have the same opportunities that I have today. You know, technology, there was nothing back in the day. No captioning, uh, no TTY, uh, you know, no Apple Watch. They had nothing, Neil. Um, and so my brothers and sister were the interpreters wherever uh, we went. So, you know, for my, my sister would have to interpret, interpret for my parents in the hospital. And so we were, you know, we kind of were a strong support net group. And so my parents wanted me to go to Gallaudet University. Uh, but I wasn't accepted. What I feel was just because I was black. What? Oh, my, my parents didn't get in because, uh, you know, they were black. So I was like 30s. Um, so back, I think 40s, they had the first black uh, deaf student. Mm -hmm. Andrew Foster. He graduated. 
he traveled, um, you know, th he was the one that opened up 48 schools and he traveled across the world. Um, and that's where there was a flood of African-American students. Uh, and we, there was a boxer. And then, you know, recognizing that you could do anything. And my mother had to uh, leave school because she just, she got, she had a bad illness. So she had to leave. However, my parents were, you know, they, they, they learned that street life. They learned quickly. And like, that, you know, they learned, you know, that it was just hard, hard, hard. We were a strong support system, but, you know, my parents had it tough. Oh, obviously your parents knew how to hustle. Absolutely. Being those street warriors. I mean, you, you have to just get in the grind. From your bio, I mean, I read that, I mean, so many different skills. And, but I didn't see dancer as a part of those skills on your bio. I mean, well, I mean, I could become a dancer if I had time. <laughs> I, I would love dancing. I, Man, I can't that. compete with you. You know, I grew up doing a lot of directing. Uh, you know, I, all my art development was in school. So when I was young, I was just really exposed and opened up my brother. He was a tap dancer. He had the, uh, back in the day, it was like the Mississippi Ravers. And so I would go every once in a while, just watch my brother just, you know, bust the move. And, I, you know, um, I wanted, you know, I wanted to join that type of group. Uh, I mean, it was a wealthy, it was a, kind of a wealthier group. Uh, and so I grew up just kind of destined. I wanted to, uh, to grow up doing something. So I started getting, I started doing miming and that kind of, I uh, started, you know, collecting some funds doing that. And, and, uh, and so I'm kind of self-taught miming. And so I'm a self-developer. So, uh, you know, I kind of never really had to rely on my parents for, monetary reasons yeah I, I was wondering how you got involved in theater and i guess that's where that passion and that immersion kind of started because you were self-taught you know on, on the streets yeah self-taught man So what was it like to, you know, you, you started getting involved in, in the arts world. How did you get the inspiration and the motivation to think that you, you could be on TV and do the things you've done? You know, the deaf school didn't have a, a theater course. You know, I just kind of was tuned into the TV and then I apply and become creative, creative with what I saw. literacy society so that's so what i what's critical is just being consumed by books and so i was doing a show every wednesday night and so every wednesday night i, I take a story from that i read from a book um and then people come up to me and like hey can you help can you help the other students and and so I try to figure, you know, what directing was meant and, and kind of what that was all about. So I kind of developed my English skills and, but, uh, you know, deaf schools aren't the same no more. These residential schools and all the theaters uh, that are electives in which isn't funded. Um, so I wish the theater curriculum was still uh, a priority. You know, it helped, it helps me develop my presentation skills um and so that theater curriculum helped me kind of where i am today right so okay so you had your literacy society now fast forward to your breaking through on tv how did that happen so my first tv oh actually no no no, no. Uh, my first tv yeah. appearance was on sesame street sesame street Yep, that was my first TV series, and I just, I just fell in love. I become addicted. I became addicted to it. You know, I mean, well, you know what I mean. 
Mm-hmm. I just became a, I was just enthralled by it and I wanted more of it. And so then I moved to California and then my second TV appearance was a different world. Oh, oh my goodness. Back to the streets. I I love Big Bird, first of all, on Sesame Street. Me too. And I remember seeing two different deaf people on that show. So there was you, and I remember somebody else because of the L. Linda. Linda, what was it? Grove? The- Last name. Rove? Am I getting that last name right? Oh. Rove? Yeah. I just wanted to make sure I was spelling it right. So that was amazing to see sign language on TV on Sesame Street. I wa- it was a game changer for me. Yeah, that's what set it up for me. Right. And I mean, I'm, I was like, mom, mom, look, you know. Uh, so that, you know, my parents could see and copy and, and try and learn the sign language. So they saw you and were trying to copy that. And that was like an open door for me to begin communicating with my parents. So fast forward, now, you know, you're older and you're on a different world. Oh, how? And you had that rap, I can't hear. <laughs> That was, I mean, it was funny, but at that time, I didn't see you as a deaf actor. I saw you as a deaf rapper. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, that young guy up there rapping. Mm. I mean, that was, yeah, that was like a live like, rapping, right? Like, yes, yeah, signing, voicing. Yeah, the two of us, Bob and I, uh, in LA, we had just moved there together. You know, you know, we were just, we were motivated. We we wanted to get in everything that was possible. You know, we wanted to offer our talents. You know, com- comedy and so many, you know, what about rap? So, you know, I really just rolled up the sleeves and so I was writing something. Uh, I presented it to the show and then people loved it. You know, that role that I got through different uh, worlds was uh, through Bob. And so uh, he helped me get that that appearance. Okay. So you were doing these club shows and then that turned into TV and how was the communication through that process? Did you need interpreters? Did they take more time to write back and forth? What did that look like during that time? Especially for, oh, sorry, go ahead. During uh, Sesame Street, I had an interpreter, but if I recall right, during different worlds, yeah, I had an interpreter. Uh, Thank God for that. I mean, because there's just so much dialogue happening. But yeah, I yeah I hadn't had a, I didn't have a problem. Uh, but the script itself, you know, we'd go back and forth, kind of, you know, try to memorize the script and try to translate it. And, uh, and so the challenge was trying to remember the new lines. Uh, so yeah, it really, it wasn't a problem. Yeah, changing scripts, and I'm sure there was many scripts and many revisions, but I'm sure not a lot of them had roles for black deaf actors out there. You talking about today? I mean, I, I'm talking about back in the day, but m- today, even so, there's not very many. There's always auditions uh, for white roles, you know, uh, black roles. I have, well, that really didn't, you know, it wasn't advantageous for black roles until maybe two or three years ago. Uh, and now, I mean, it's exploded roles are more available. You know, now it's changed where any ethnicity is welcome to audition. More and more roles are coming up, even within the last couple of months. 
but yeah, back then there was nothing. Yeah, there was, you know, I was sitting waiting. I, I was getting cobwebs, huh? <laughs> It's like, hello, I'm here. Um, you know, and then Baby Driver, that set everything off for me. Right. Uh, it was written for a deaf black role. Uh, and I know you were saying you were, you were waiting for it, had these cobwebs, waiting for these opportunities. But really, you created some opportunities and you made them happen yourself, too, while in the meantime of you waiting for these roles. So, I mean, I know you are connected with other deaf uh, individuals as well, other deaf creators. You are on TV shows. You are, you know, speaking your own language through these scripts. Yes, yeah, yeah. Right now we're, uh, we developed 12 scripts Oof. for uh, comedies, dramas, uh, yeah, different genres. Uh, So we, there was something that we were already doing before, uh, you know, plays that we were going around for the, in for theaters, residential schools. My biggest play uh, was see what I'm saying. The deaf uh, was are you deaf? And so that was one of the first plays that we did at these different residential schools and we toured. And it was just showing our own way, you know, rather than waiting for, you know, roles to get picked up, you know, we did it ourselves and we, we were there. So, you know, it was kind of like a reversal. And you said you were doing your own, you were doing it yourself, like the deaf way. So now, I mean, it's like a different culture, right? I mean, like, it's your own way, it's your business, and you don't have to rely on that hearing-centric business model. Yeah, because, you know, when you get a role, it's always like, you know, it's, it's kind of a little role or you're a victim, and, you know, it's the same labels, the same stereotypes. Um, so I'm trying to create something bigger, something with variety, uh, uh, comedy, uh, horror, uh, different things. So that it allows people to create, uh, you know, a simple role, you know, one liners, uh, you know, something humor, you know, that, that we're, that's off, that, that, that's old. You know, we want things that are authentic. You know, same, same. I want the same for hearing and deaf people. Right. I'm always, um, you know, when you have the deaf person that's in that small role that makes them seem, you know, less intelligent than they are, you know, we're, do we're done with that, you know? So we want more roles than that. And, you know, one of my favorite characters, oh, you're, you're about to talk about it. Yeah, Baby Driver, because that set off everything. It was, you know, I want a leading role. Now, I think it's time to use all of my history, all of my years of acting, you know, all of all of the talents to employ. You know, I want it to build where it's a full deaf cast. And I noticed that there was more deaf opportunities uh, coming up, but I want that equal high quality scripts. Like any streaming company. And that's something I'm working on right now. I love that. I love that. I hope that I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember, you know, like one day I was just, I was walking and like, I want to see <laughs> DJ and, and Dev in a role like Superman, you know, like that deaf, just magic character that, you know, uh, you're just looking up at the moon and we have that Superman character. Yeah. Yeah, one of my scripts actually has a deaf superhero. 
You know, that might be something I have to plug in. Right. And because you were born into a deaf family, like you have had those role models. And today, children typically don't have those. They don't have role models of color. They don't have deaf role models. They don't have these superheroes that they can look up to. And so now to be able to be visible in the next generation's life is huge. Yeah, and that's the goal for our company. You know, I want, I want good, bad. I want everything in between. I want people to get the opportunity to grow, to grow and be successful within our company. You know, I've been traveling around the world and now because of Zoom, uh, I've been having the opportunity to connect with countries uh, more more frequently. And, and now there's such a thirst uh, for something that they want to do. And they want to set up maybe their own show. And so hopefully, you know, I can connect with them and help them grow their whatever they're doing in their country. Some people are asking me, what is the sign for the studio? Do you have one developed yet? Is this For a sign world studios, do you have a sign? Yep, Sign World Studios. This is it. There's this sign. This is a not, and there's a nonprofit, uh, kind of a training and program uh, for editing, uh, videography, illustration. Uh, it's kind of the bottom line of where we can get people to develop. So that program is kind of the nonprofit. Is, is like the bottom line. Below the line, yeah. Mm -hmm. Videography, editing. There's kind of, it's all in one, it's encompassing one. That nonprofit is what we're working on there. And then the, the for profit studio, or for profit company, it's called Spotlight. So we have a media production. So everything kind of building that stream world. And so where everything can be streamed into, from countries all over the world that can stream into this one platform. And that's something that's uh, developing, something that developing films and, and uh, partnerships, um, do something like in-house and out-house. You know, where we can partner and make films and, and Everything videography. You know, we're you know, the, kind of expanding on our deaf culture and talents uh, that we can, entities can partner us with us to, to have that authentic. Yeah, we're spotlighting them in a, in a way that the hearing world doesn't know how to. And Antoine is saying, that's really beautiful. I mean, I know uh, you've also been partnering with Disney, right? Oh, you were there, yeah. Wow. I was there for kind of one year. It would have been nice to be there a little longer, but it was short and sweet. Wow, that's wonderful. But you're doing a lot. You're involved in a lot. So now, what are you most excited for now? You know, our streaming companies uh, partnering up with it, like NBC. I got 12 scripts. We're pitching those, uh, you know, trying to get interested uh, collaborations going, partnerships uh, with, you know, just the potential of development that's happening. Uh, so that's where we are focused on now. Also, uh, the networking that's in pro process, uh, building those partnerships so where we get the appropriate funding. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Yep. So we're we're working on those partnerships. We're focusing on still more writing scripts on the creative aspect. Uh, it's the only way to really be able to get that production in development. And so we're, we're just working on content right now. I'm the content king right now. Anton is saying, so you're still acting 
at the same time or what what is your acting career like at the moment yeah uh, acting is my butter my bread and butter Uh, I mean, the acting is my bread and butter because that's that's kind of what helped fuel the account to build uh, my own personal projects. I remember that you played a blue. What are they called? They're the blue people. I'm trying to remember the show. Oh, shoot. I know you were in Baby Driver, which was fantastic Loved oh it. avatar <laughs> avatar avatar yes okay yeah that's my blue avatar, yeah. That's oh yeah 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 oh it's coming yeah. soon right yeah it, it'll be coming out avatar 2 will be uh released in december of 2022 Yeah, so right now we're in the building uh, aspect. So you'll see a lot of short kind of uh, promotion. So you'll see you'll see it coming out, and I'll be featured. And it has Navi sign language in it. Yeah, this is the sign for it's called Navi. So it's a kind of a built-in avatar. So it's about three thousand five hundred signs, or three hundred and fifty signs. So yeah, we partnered with Disney. There's a book that hopefully will be coming out. Uh, it's, it's a new, new language. Is that like the spot kind of thing? Same kind of thing? <laughs> so if you've seen Avatar 1, uh, there's one sign that they use. So that's the sign that they use for I know you. I acknowledge you. And now the rest, I can't tell you. And you got to wait until the movie's released. And then we can share all of the signs that were utilized in the film. Well, thank you for sharing that first sign. I think that's great to know. I don't want to be greedy and trying to get all of them from you. But I mean, I've just, I've learned so much from you. And I remember you came to the Bay International Festival, right? Um, you were involved in the music. And Bob Hilton was there as well, because he's an actor as well. Musician too? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, in, he's involved in several shows. Yeah, the two of you team up a lot. Yeah. Right now he's doing his thing. I'm doing my thing. Yeah, every once in a while we jam together. We come together, kind of, you know, release that stress, get creative with one another, write the music. Right now he's on a movie. And after that, we'll, you know, we'll see. Uh, I mean, yeah, we haven't, you know, really, he's been working on a script for about two or three years. You know, movie scripts can take one to 20 years to develop. You know, you gotta obviously build in the script first, and then um, the movie's gotta get developed, and then you get, you know, you gotta go out there and, and get uh, funding for the movie. So it could take a long, long time. So, and we pitch it, and we get rejected, and nose in our face, and it's a continuous process from there. You know, the industry is not aware of, of the culture, our culture. You know, deaf-led stories. You know, our stories are authentic, they're everyday life. It's not about the inability, but we're human. We're human, it's about the human story. You know, we eat the same, we run the same, we get sick, we get married, we get divorced. We are similar. So I hope the industry can pick up You know, last week I learned so, oh, it's, I was talking with somebody and they were, they didn't know about what we, what, what goes on and they, they agree, but it's all about education. And as you know, Antoine, it's every day, it's about mm -hmm. educating. And that's my goal, every day, educating. Always, yeah. 
I mean, you have to tell people every day, deaf people can drive too. Deaf people can have babies too. Deaf people, deaf people can have businesses too. You know, every day it's like the same thing. Yeah, and I've been telling that same story since 1980s. Right. I mean, deaf people have been on the earth. We are humans, you know, we're a part of humanity. And it's like constantly we're just dehumanized because we're deaf. And it's like, no, 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 no. And that's why it's so important to empower each other. And yeah, BIPOC, diversity. Yes. Continue encouraging and elevating. That's what our company is. It's about, it's time. It's time. Yes. I mean, when we're, when we're born, it's like, you know, we're, we're at home and we're, we're loved. And, you know, maybe there'll be a, you know, a deaf child, a coded child, you know, but it's like when you get out into the world, something changes. That's the theme, is make change happen. You know, our studio is, we're forcing that change, making opportunities happen for all deaf, hard of hearing, hearing, all, you know, working together. And that requires a lot of demand. You know, it's like you said, you know, love, you know, motivation, love inspires us all. Uh, and that's how we can grow faster. That's how it'll become a reality for all. It's just spreading that love. And so I'm saying we, we have to make that change. And uh, now we're gonna discuss some people who are those change makers. So we're gonna play a game called Name Those People. All right. Don't, don't look, don't look. Ooh, I can't see. Okay, ready, ready? Here we go. Ready? Okay. We have a beautiful picture of an African woman low cut hair, wearing a white v-neck shirt, looking artistically at the camera. So you're asking me? Yes, CJ, I'm asking you. Yeah, <laughs> I just had a chat with her about an hour ago. Uh, yeah, Michelle Banks. Yes, that is absolutely right. We worked on, mm -hmm. uh, a, last week we worked, we worked on a Black History event. Work on Black Futuristic event. And if you don't remember the name, you can describe what they do, things about them, that's also acceptable. Okay, so this is a picture of an African-American woman, appears in her light brown skin with her loosened, wavy, honey blonde long hairstyle, wearing a soft, warmly blue blouse, looking at the camera and smiling. Who is it? I've seen her. Is she deaf? She is a mix. She's deaf and hearing. She's hearing, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Hearing. So it's a mix of hearing and deaf. Name those people. But I forgot. I don't I don't know. Vanessa oh. Williams. Yeah, Vanessa Williams. Yep, she's an American singer, actress, and fashion designer. One of the first women to receive the Miss America title. And she was crowned in 1983. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this is an African man, brown skin, bald haircut, wearing glasses, a collared shirt, and a tie. Oh, his name is slipping me.
G, think G. G and then L. Yep. Yeah, Glenn Anderson. Glenn Anderson. Yeah. Dr. Glenn Anderson. One of the, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's on the board of Gallaudet, right? He's on the Gallaudet's board. Right. I think he's, I think he, he uh, requested, he, he asked to come, uh, for me to come and do the graduation ceremony speech. All right, next picture of an African-American man wearing uh, a white and red baseball uniform, brown skin, and a baseball cap. I'm familiar with him, uh, but his name it escapes me. I think it's what C do you do? I think it starts with a C, right? Yeah, what, yeah what's his job? You can name that too. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he was, he was his angels. Play for the Angels. I knew it started with a C. Yeah, Curtis Pride. Pride. Baseball player in two, since 2009. What has he been doing as of recently? Is he retired? Uh, right now? I'm not sure what he's doing right now. Right now, I'm not sure what he's doing. But I think he's been going to Gallaudet University. Next, we got an African-American man, light brown skin, black short haircut, thick mustache, wearing a striped jacket, and wearing a smoky tie. He's looking to the left, smiling. Do you know him? Know his signs? You know his signs, yeah. Oh, he was involved. Um, I've met... Oh. Oh, it's killing me. Don't, don't tell him that I didn't remember his name. Don't tell him. Oba Baputende. The interpreter is unsure if they pronounced it correctly. Cool guy. Really cool guy. And he signs. Yeah, and he's very good. All right, next we've got a brown skin male afro haircut with a black gray goatee sitting cross-armed looking straight into the camera mm -hmm. no. you know you I know don't. you know would debbie allen i mean what is he you can name his job too no idea i have no idea what he's involved in sorry alvin ailey Oh yeah, the Navy Junior. Yeah, prominent black dancer in New York. He was one of the first black dancers in that in that company. Yep, this was his name sign. Back when yeah. I was in, yeah, that guy, he was an incredible. He was in Alvin Ailey. Oh, he was he was incredible. I think Alvin Ailey kind of uh, recruited him for two years and then let him go. Uh, unfortunately, he they let him go because he, you know, didn't have uh, he wasn't a quote unquote good English uh, writer, but he was talented. And he was just like, he was a natural talent. It was sad that, that he was let go. Next is a golden brown skinned male with a neat low haircut, black trimmed beard on his jawline, wearing a blue collared shirt, looking serious at the camera. I don't know who this is either, actually. <laughs> no, just kidding. Derek Coleman Jr. from LA. Football player. Oh, football. Yep. Uh, since he was in the Super Bowl 2014. 
And then he signed as a free agent for the Minnesota, um, the Vikings. Oh. First deaf NFL player. Is he still playing? Is he still in the NFL? Is that what, six years ago? He was the first, wow. First mm -hmm. deaf NFL player in the Super Bowl. Wow. Uh, we yeah we need a lot more, a lot more of those a lot more. Almost finished. We got my favorite actor up here, an African American male, light skin and a black kinky wavy short haircut, wearing a jacket. Do you know who this is? He played in the Last Dragon. The last what? The Last Dragon. Dragon. Oh. Mm. Oh, I didn't see that movie. To Mac Gorillo. Ooh. The interpreter doesn't share the pronunciation, but from LA and lives in New York. He's an American actor and he was in Leroy Green. And that was in 85. So he was doing martial art in that movie. He was copying different. Uh, he was in the, the Last Dragon and in, in different roles. He partnered with um, the Last Dragon. Maybe you remember the quote, the boss. I'm your master. I'm your master, I'm your master. And so that was like his fighting quote. Kiss my converse. So I think, oh, we have one African-American woman wearing pearl earrings, Smiling, looking to the right. Who is she? Mm -hmm. uh, ah, hey, Ben. Yes, hey, Ben. Yeah. Hey, Ben Germa. From here, from Oakland. She's a lawyer, a deafblind lawyer, and she graduated from Harvard University. That's right, Hobbin, Hobbin. She was supposed to be the last one, but... Here we go, we got one more. An African-American woman appears in light brown skin with her long honey brown hairstyle wearing a short sleeve shirt. Yeah, Rosalie Demon. Demon, that's yes. right. I got her last name wrong. Rosalie. From Massachusetts. Good job. Ha, 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 ha. It's like Black History Month every day, you know? We should always be learning and always just supporting one another in the community. Yeah, yep. I wanted to show people a part of the film since you worked so hard on it. Yeah, it's hard work. This thing, this bad thing that took came, it is an ancient evil. We must not take it lightly. <laughs> you say. 
saw it behind the door. Do to me, Impusha. Allow me to. What about Ronnie Sam? Clear Ronnie go out. Took off in the car, man. Towards the track, man. Wait, 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 wait. Please don't go. I can explain. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I scared you. I, it was a mistake. <laughs> So great. I don't want to be greedy with your time. We're almost finished. But I do want to give the audience an opportunity to ask you some questions, if you don't mind. Yeah, um, thank you. Now's your time. Ask CJ Jones anything. Go ahead, type it in the chat box. If you have any questions. What they want to ask, CJ? I'm giving you a warning. I don't know what it's going to be. What would you tell an aspiring artist during their journey? You need to continue and follow your passion. Without passion, you will not be able to accomplish your dreams. First, understand it is hard work. Be willing to accept discrimination. Be willing to fail. Criticism. Be willing to take on. These are necessary steps to becoming successful. And remember, don't wait for someone to help you. You have to work hard on becoming successful for yourself and then other people will follow along. What's next for you? I'm still writing. And of course, I'm still going through auditions for different TV series. So there's on Facebook, there's a promotion uh, that's going on. So we're just working on working on a lot of stuff and grinding for our company, trying to grow, uh, hire, uh, making films, networking, training. Uh, so our goal is to have a very large and prominent company. How did you fall in love with the Creative Access Showcase you mentioned and work with John, the songwriter? I think it sounds like they're in Philly. The ride is what you're talking about, I think they mean? Yeah, it was, I was very honored to bring the ride to the creative. People really enjoyed that. That was the first time that um, we were able to really show a short film and I, people really, really enjoyed it. And that was right before Baby Driver and that's when everything kind of blew up. Yeah, creative access has really helped uh, artistry and being recognized. So I really appreciate and thank you. And thanks to creative access. Um, where exactly was Different World Films? Was that on Howard's campus? No. That whole film was in Hollywood, filmed in Hollywood. There's just a large studio. So it was all made to look. It was all made to look as if it was filmed somewhere else. But yeah, it was filmed in Hollywood. 
If you could redo a role, what would it be? So redo a role uh, for what? I don't know. I don't know. Redoing a role. You know, if I had to if I had to do anything, it's you know, developing a role to be a lead, a lead writer, a role that I would be able to be involved in writing. Somebody wrote a book called The Drum with No Sound. And that had a deaf character in it. And so here we go. A comment from that author. I loved watching you in the show A Different World. You inspired me to learn sign language. So she mentioned you as a part of her inspiration. Wow. Well, thank you, Katrina. And where can we watch those earlier movies that you were a part of? Um, I know there's a few on YouTube. I think you can see, you can find different worlds on YouTube. Yeah, I think Yalu that University has some archived. Uh, Baby Driver, you can rent. And Avatar, you know, sorry, you'll have to go and watch it in the movie theater. I think a lot of it you can catch up on YouTube. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is kind of collect all of the, the everything that I was on and put it in one location where, uh, where our, our uh, would be accessible for uh, within our company. Uh, do you remember doing the summer program for the deaf and hearing channel teenagers working for Channel 25? That's a part of the history books. In Oakland, if I'm right, I think it was it was uh, it was done in Oakland, right? What's the name? Yes, 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 yes. Ah, oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, it was the short, the short summer. Um, unfortunately, it didn't pan out the way. I uh, wish it would. So again, I don't want to take up all of your time. We could ask questions all night. But I do want to ask you, what is your final word that you want people to know? You, you mentioned being able to accept criticism and accomplish your dream, but what else do you want to tell people? You know, the message I want to give to people is push. Push yourself. Push deaf. Push deaf for, be for deaf acting, elevating. Now, I'm working in Florida. I'm working on, it's called art. There's an art and re residency. I think it's being changed to, uh, for all, uh, all Florida for all the arts. Yeah, I was, uh, I did that residency for 17 years. Uh, that's been, and that it was an incredible experience with those schools in Florida. And I've watched those deaf kids just kind of watch that motivation. And I'm feeling that, that connection. You know, and so it's important to have that diversity, to have that strength within. And whether LGBTQ or, or uh, BIPOC, uh, it's all what's critical is to be recognized. And so, you know, continue growing our company, you don't want to wait for somebody else to give it to you. For me, I want it to be, uh, you know, that spotlight. House. You know, something where people can connect and grow. You know, it's not about me. It's about collaboration. You know, the more collaboration we have, the more we can help each other grow the more opportunities we can help and then the farther we can spread. 
you know, I, I can't do it alone. Well said. Well said. So people you want to follow CJ, uh, you haven't been following him already on social media. Here's where you can find him. He has a website, www.signworldstudios.com. He's got www.cjjones.com. And then he's also on remember.sign. And then he's also got an Instagram that you can follow him at www.instagram.com slash the CJ Jones. You were going to say something, CJ? Yeah, I want to add one more thing. So Sign World, we have a website. Uh, it'll be, it'll, there's, it'll come out, there's new. A brand new look on March 26th. I'm looking forward to that. All right, new design for Sign World Studios. I'm excited for you. I'm excited to see everything that comes in your future, your next film. You've been doing so much hard work and really you, you'd never stop. You never stop. So I appreciate everything that you do. And I hope that you have, uh, you know, a great next show, have a great night with your family. Yeah, if you can think it, it'll, it, if you can think it, it'll happen. So I, this is, this platform is beautiful. Uh, so thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you for having the, the diversity of people. Thank you. Thank you. And just big love. Peace. Peace, brother. Peace. Shall I go off? <laughs> mm hmm Yep. Wow. Wow. Just some final thoughts. I mean, what you learned from CJ Jones. Just not to, not to segregate yourself, just come together. You know, you don't want people separate. You know, we, we need to come together, elevate each other, help each other grow and develop. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a, a farm with all different, you know, like fruits and, and, and vegetables, you know, we're all there for the health of each other, you know, we need each other to, to grow, you know? Well, that's what I see when I see CJ Jones. I, I see someone, you know, who doesn't have limits, who doesn't look at deafness or BIPOC or, you know, anything as a, a limit, you know, there's no limitation, you know? And so... It's just working together, collaborating together, elevating each other, making our dreams happen and come to life. So that's what I see, you know, and that's what I saw today. And CJ has been making that happen, you know, with so many different skills that he's been sharing with all of us and all of you, you know, not just, you know, himself. He hasn't just been keeping it to himself. And so all of these different passions and talents, you know, and skills, He's been working and sharing that with you all. So, you know, everyone just wake up. Really tap into your gifts, your potential. Wow. Really woke me up today. This is Deaf Woke. So thank you. Thank you to CJ Jones. I'd like to thank our interpreters. Thank the audience, HowlRound, Drop Labs, who made these shoes, these sick beats. And again, thank you to you. Everyone who's watching, who's asking questions, who's been involved in the game, name those people. Thank you for watching. Thanks for being a part of it. It really is an inspiration. And if you'd like to help out, remember to like our Facebook page or our YouTube.
like and subscribe. And I'd also like to thank Popfish for making this shirt, Deaf Woke. If you'd like to donate, you can donate to this page that's scrolling on the bottom of the screen, www.realurbanjazzdance.com slash contact us. So you can donate because really this isn't, uh, this is self-funded and we depend on the support of our deaf community and the hearing community that watch this. So let's help elevate us all together. I hope you were inspired by tonight. I know I have been. So again, thank you everyone for coming tonight. I'm Antoine Hunter, also known as Purple Fire Crow. And we've been on Deaf Woke. I need to come up with a better time for that. All right. <laughs>